Okay, a quick introduction into modeling. Okay, you are expected to be able to make a full size or a scale 3D model of your chosen design idea. So some of you might recognize this from year 10. Okay, we've got an acrylic Bluetooth speaker with all of the components inside and speakers on the front and the back. Prior to that, the student had to work out all of the dimensions and has produced a full size corrugated card model. When I'm talking about corrugated card, I'm talking about this packaging material that has this zigzag layer. You could use paper. It will obviously be a lot more flexible. Uh, you could use um, cereal box, folding box board material. That's a little bit more rigid. Okay, so that might be suitable where you can actually fold those thinner materials. For corrugated card, it's a uh, takes a little bit more work but it depends on what resources you have to hand this one has been joined together in the corners using um, either pva glue or hot glue it depends what you've got at home in terms of the materials you can use we can obviously use sellotape we can use glue stick glue we can use masking tape okay masking tape is a little bit less sticky What you might need to do is to cut it into thin strips to enable you to join together your material. And you also need some scissors. If you're lucky enough to have a craft knife and a cutting mat, that is a better alternative to use. Just remember the health and safety factors that we talked about last year when we were modeling. Okay. Um, so working out and planning exactly what you're going to do. Okay. So we've got corrugated card. This is twin wall, so you can see it's double thickness you can also crush the material. You can actually squash the corrugations and that enables you to bend it into a curve shape. So that works quite well. If you've got some thin card, this is what we would use in school. That enables you to get quite smooth curves as well, but you'd have to work out how to construct and enclose the ends to maintain that shape. So you might need to cut, for example, a curved shape in a rigid material and then try and align that and fit that to it. Okay, that could be one way. So maybe it's a combination of materials. Um, for the corrugated card, you've got to work out, okay, how could I join the material together? So we can use masking tape, okay? It's not very sticky, but it kind of glues together enough to be able to give us a 3D representation of our product that we can test. Okay, you can use the, the tab and slot approach, which works quite well. So if you can carefully cut those, that enables you to slot together a design. Okay, I'll show you how these relate to a design uh, concept that we're talking about. Or you can start off with your models in 2D. Okay, the key thing with your modeling is working to accurate sizes. So you can either work to full size, like this one, or if we were doing seating design, we'd work to a scale. Now I will share this file with you in due course. This is called an ergonome. The green drawing is called an ergonome. Now basically what this is, this is a scale drawing, at a scale of one to five, so one fifth the size of a human being, of an adult that we can then offer up, we can place on our model and we can judge. Okay, is the leg height okay? Is the seat depth okay? Does the seat back look tall enough? Does the seat angle look okay? Now that is that is perfectly fine for a 2D kind of sketch model. What we need to think about is how we could then turn that into a 3D. So if we look at this concept here, again, we can test that in the same way. We can test, does it fit on our ergonome? Now in this case, I think the seat depth looks a little bit too long, but the tab and slot enables us to adjust potentially the back angle. What you can do is you can cut out your ergonome and sit them inside your product, okay? So that would be an interesting corrugated card model. Make sure you think about the direction of these zigzags, okay? So this material is gonna be very, very strong in this direction where the zigzags are running top to bottom. It's gonna be less strong in this area where it can actually crease quite easily. You might choose to use that property of your material. OK, um, ultimately, you'll need to produce quite a sophisticated model. So this one has been done as a final development model uh, produced on the laser cutter. 
This one has been made out of multiple layers of thin corrugated material. So here we have, I think, four thin layers glued together with PVA glue. And we've been able to leave ourselves with some little slot features in the side to enable this to slide up and down. And using things like, um, these are like bamboo skewers uh, from a barbecue kit. So you can think about using those. You might have some of those at home. Um, and that gives us an idea for kind of folding seating. Now, ultimately, that's what we need to be trying to get towards if we can. But the sketch modeling is the next stage in what you need to produce for your idea. You've created your designs, you've reviewed your ideas, you now need to model them, but you need to model them at an appropriate scale. Final thing that I want to say about the scale is if you follow the link on the anthropometric data on the classroom, you will be able to find tables of information that show you the dimensions of the human form, for example, the floor to um, the underneath of the thigh, the thigh length, the back length, the eye position when sitting and standing, uh, the reach, how far the customer or the user can actually reach. Um, we've got these ergonomics, which I can share with you. They're at one to five scale, so one fifth actual size. If you're doing seating design, you'll need to work at a one to fifth or even a one to 10 size. What that means is you divide the actual real world dimensions by either five to get it to one to five or by 10 to get it to a one to 10 scale. Again, I will share some further information with you on that. If you're doing a smaller product, for example, a headset or sunglasses or a speaker, again, work at full size, work at full size. Now it takes it takes time to develop your model and it might take several goes. The key thing is to photograph each model that you produce, upload those onto your modeling development slides, okay? And then we can take it from there as to then how we develop and refine our idea further. But final advice, be resourceful, use what you have at home and see how you get on. See you later.